If you've been looking for a yoga practice to complement your fitness routine, whether that's CrossFit or running or just plain old gym stuff, I've got a treat for you today. I recognize the importance of yoga. I don't do it nearly enough. So today I called my friend Trish and she led us in a practice. So I hope you enjoyed as much as I did. All right, so do you want to get started? Okay, so we're going to start first just with our alignment. We're going to do a little bit of centering, some warm up, um, some flow, and then um, we'll just finish off with just a bit of a shavasana, so laying at the end. All right, so let's start. Um, you can go ahead and stand up against the wall. So this is an exercise I like to do because this is already yoga. So anytime that you're able to stack your joints, you are already in the position to do any of the poses for the entire class. And this goes for handstand, downward dog, tree pose, everything's already right here. So go ahead and stand with your feet about hip width apart, and then back up the heels as close as you can get to the mat, and then go ahead, pull your belly in, turn your inner thighs towards the back of the room, and I'm actually gonna stand here just so you can get that side view, and then push the back of your head towards the back of the mat. Now notice if you are laying down on the mat, all of this would be touching as well, the back of your head, the backs of your shoulder blades, your hips, and then the backs of your legs and heels. So this right here is your true north. Now we're gonna add the yoga part of it and take a deep breath in through the nose and let it go. So yoga is breathing. So if you can breathe, you can do yoga. This is more yoga than doing any of these crazy pretzel -y poses. So we're gonna go ahead and step off of the mat or the wall and then come onto your mat. And then I'll just follow along with you. So push down through the four corners of your feet. The best way to do that is engage and lift up the toes. And then from there, pushing down, pull the belly in, pull the shoulders back, and then raise the crown of the head up towards the ceiling. So this is our true north pose. So if you were to face the mat and turn and look down, this would be your plank pose. If you were here, this is tree pose. So we've got this foundation set the entire time. All right, with that, that's our fundamental basic 101. So let's come on down to the mat and we're just gonna do a little bit of grounding and centering. So as I said, anytime you are breathing constantly and with intention, you are practicing yoga. So let's go ahead and you can come with your shins on the mat or come into easy pose if that's really tough on your knees. So I'll sit in easy pose and then you can stay there. So we'll bring our palms face up or down. If you're feeling like you wanna be really open, have them open and receptive, are feeling grounded, you can face them down. And we'll just do about three breaths. So I think this is important part of our yoga class because Breathing is everything in our class. So every single movement has an inhale and exhale. So we'll go ahead and get back into our true north pose. So lift the shoulders up, opening the lungs, pull the belly in, palms however you want it on your legs, and then just float your eyes closed just for a couple of breaths. And we're gonna breathe in through the nose. Hold it at the top and go ahead and let it go through the mouth. And just already start to feel how great that felt. Continue breathing that way. Breathe in through the nose. Pause at the top, filling up your lungs, and then let it go. And then in our flow today, we will be doing Ujjayi breath. So begin to close the mouth and breathe in and out through the nose. So inhaling through the nose, pause at the top, contract the muscles at the back of your throat and then exhale through the nose. Continue with this and you'll notice that your breath 
begins to sound like the ocean. It's almost as if you could whisper your breath out. And this is just a nice, calming, heat building breath that will do the entire practice. So throughout our practice, I say inhale and exhale about a thousand times. Every time I say that, just come back to this breath because this is where your yoga is. It's connecting your mind and your body. And we do that by breathing consciously. So sending our conscious breath to our body. So we'll continue to do that maybe two more times, breathing in and exhale. You can even add a count, maybe inhale for a count of four and then exhale for the same count. All right, and begin to open up your eyes. And let's start with just letting the body kind of loosen up so you can shake it out. And then maybe um, I'm gonna join you in this position. And you can still do the, well, actually I'll stay here. We'll just do, you can be with your shins. I'll be on your, on. you can stay there. So we'll open up, we're gonna add a twist. So begin to reach over to the right. Right hand's gonna reach behind and then try to grow up through the spine and then release, let's go to the other side. Do you feel more centered after that breathing? It's amazing what it does. Just a few minutes of breathing can really help come back. All right, come back to center. Let's do that one more time. Inhale, and then use your exhale. So remember that your breath is your power. So anytime you're feeling like, oh, this is too much, or I can't do this, or I feel a little bit of panic, come back to this space. It's always there for you. All right, and then let's go ahead and release that. Um, just really quick, I wanna do um, a bit of a shoulder stretch. So I'm gonna face the back so you can see the back of me. So you can stay there facing forward. So bring your hand to the right, and then take your left hand as if you're drawing a four. And then we're just going to turn and drop our right ear towards the mat, but make sure that your shoulders are staying square. That's good. And then if it feels good, you can go ahead and begin to set your gaze onto your, my terrible pedicure that I have here. <laughs> I was going to say your fingernails, but mine took the attention. All right, come back to center and then let's switch sides. So this is just opening up the shoulders because we're about to be on them a lot and then drop the neck. And then if it feels okay, only if it feels okay, begin to turn and look at your fingernails on your left side. And then let's come out of that the same way you came into it and then shake out the arms. All right, so let's start off in all four. So remember that you are still in your true north. So I wanted to do that exercise at the beginning because it really does come into play the entire practice. So stack your knees and hips together. Good, and I'm just gonna show on Amy here. And then shoulders, elbows, and wrists are all in the same line. Nice, flat, supported back. Pull your belly button into the spine and then act as if you're trying to zip it up towards your heart. So you're really pulling in. Your weight is mostly in the L's of your fingers, so you're not dumping into the wrist. You're pushing into the pads of your fingers. Now take an inhale to look up and send your hips way back. That's it, that's it. So. How does this feel on yours? Are you able to move through here? Just go with your own flexibility. Now push up through the hands and dome out through the back of the heart. That's it, inhale, adding in the breath, good. And then exhale as you send the back of your heart, that space between the shoulder blades up, good. Keep moving. And one of the good things about this exercise is it's warming up your spine, your knees, your shoulders, your hands, but it's also getting you into that cadence of breathing and inhaling and exhaling as you move. So inhale, we'll do maybe two more of these. And then feel free to move at your own pace. You don't have to follow what we're doing because this is your body's rhythm. So you can be faster or slower. You can add in some head movement, just whatever feels good to you. And then we'll finish up one more. 
and then come back to that neutral spine. So really pulling your belly in, eyes are looking straight down with your spine long, extend your right leg straight behind you. And what wants to happen sometimes is the hip wants to open, keep your leg nice and square, and then extend the left hand in front of you with the left bicep right by your ear, that's it. And then thumb facing up, now pull the knee to the elbow underneath your belly. So you're squeezing in for three, and then go ahead, extend it out. Good, two, nice, one, one more time. And then this time, extend long, 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 and imagine somebody's pulling on your leg one direction and pulling your hand the other. Take the inhale, and then come back down to your neutral spine, and then switch sides. So now the left leg is gonna go straight out, and you can flex or point, whatever works for you, and then extend your right hand out. Take the inhale, make sure the belly's not sagging. You wanna pull that in, and then draw it in for three, Breathing with it, two, and last one. Extend it out and reach, 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 reach as if you're touching two opposite sides of the room. Go ahead and bring your hands down, and then we're back to that neutral place. You'll want to, I'm just gonna move up a little. We're gonna curl our toes from here and go ahead and send your hips back into your downward facing dog. All right, so down dog looks like an upside down V. And if your heels don't touch, that's totally okay, but you'll wanna just try to sink them down as much as you can with the idea of lengthening out the back of your body. So I'm just gonna give you a little bit of an assist here. I'm gonna push on your low back. That's it, just finding that nice sweet space. Good, breathe with it and act as if your ribs almost have like a corset around them. So you're pulling your ribs in. Breathing here, palms are nice and flat, hands are flat, and then you're squeezing the biceps as if you're trying to squeeze the head. That's it, with plenty of space between the shoulders. We're gonna hold this for two more breaths and I'm just gonna show the difference. The shoulders, instead of being here, make sure they go nice and wide. All right, one more breath here. And then go ahead and walk your hands down to the, let's go to the back of the mat. So walk your hands palm by palm coming to your toes, grab opposite elbows, and sway side to side. So as if you're drawing rainbows around your feet. There you go. All right, and go ahead and let the hands fall. And then we're still gonna stack up our alignment here. So I'm gonna push you forward and act as if your ribs are coming up and tilting forward and let the upper body go. So a lot of us hold stress in our neck, and one of the hardest poses of this is to release the neck. So just go ahead and let that, that's it. Letting it all out. All right, so from here we're gonna inhale, come to a flat back. So imagine your cow pose earlier, so nice flat back. Exhale to fold. Now push down into the mat and reach all the way up. Breathe in as you come up. And then exhale the hands to heart center. So we're just working through. We're gonna start working with some sun salutations. So let's go ahead and breathe that back in. And then as you forward fold, lead with your heart and hinge right at your hips. That's it, all the way down. Head is the last thing to go. There we go. Inhale to halfway lift. So create that flat back. You can even push into your shins, getting traction here. Exhale to fold and then walk your hands palm by palm back to the front into high plank now. So in your high plank, remember our true north, our hands are out in front of us. So we're still here, belly's pulled in, and the entire outside of the body is squishing in towards the center. Take the inhale. We're gonna do an exercise here. Shift forward on the exhale. So you're just coming up to the toes. And inhale back. Exhale forward. Inhale back. Exhale forward. Keep going, inhale back. Exhale forward, hold this, set your gaze on the wood or whatever is in front of you. Exhale, go ahead and drop the knees. We're gonna lower down with the elbows right by our side. So they're not sticking out, they're right by our sides. Push it back up, Un, um, curl the toes or lift your knees off the mat. So either option, knees on or off the mat. And then we're gonna go down and lower and raise and lower. And raise, one more time, breathe it in. Lower all the way down to the belly. Bring your hands at the base of your sacrum and then chin on the mat. 
lift it up, coming into a nice little opening of the heart. That's it. So interlace, are you able to interlace your hands? Yes, and then now send your hands towards the back of the room. That's it, that's it. Opening the heart here. Go ahead and release that. Bring your hands directly underneath the heads of your shoulders. So you can bring your, yeah, we'll do it right here. Now, before you come up, squeeze the elbows and then just begin to lift the heart up off the mat. With this, push like crazy into the shoelace as part of your feet. Pull the belly in. Go ahead and come all the way down to your belly. Good, this time, push back in on the next inhale. So push into your hands, lift the heart up and go as much as you wanna go, that's it. So make this your full version. I'm just gonna open the chest here, that's it. So think about the shoulder blades drawing down towards the spine. Go ahead and curl, come all the way back down and then curl the feet, push it straight up to a high plank. That's it, yes, downward facing dog. All right, so walk your down dog out. We are now going to put all that together and do our Suri Namaskar A. So one breath per movement. So take a deep inhale here and let it go. And I'll join you for this first one. And then look at the front of your mat, bend the knees and take a giant step forward. Inhale, halfway lift, exhale, fold. Push down into the mat, inhale to rise up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale to halfway lift again, so we're putting it all together. Exhale, plant your hands, step it back to your high plank. Now we're gonna move through our vinyasa, so shift forward on the inhale, lower on the exhale. Curl the toes, come on up to your upward dog or cobra, thighs either on or off the mat, and then exhale to push it back to downward facing dog. You can also come into all fours, then down dog. So that was our first one. We're gonna do two more to our breath. All right, so let's take a deep breath in. <sighs> Let it go. Okay, look between your hands, bend your knees, step or float forward. Good, inhale to halfway lift. There we go. <laughs> you can come all the way up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale to halfway lift again. Exhale, plant your hands. You can step or float it back. Upward facing dog on the inhale. Downward facing dog on the exhale. So you see we break down all the steps piece by piece and then put it together. And the next thing you know, you're doing yoga. So take a deep breath in. Let it go. We'll do two more. Look to the front of your mat, step or float on the exhale. Take the inhale to halfway lift. Exhale to fold. Inhale to rise up. Exhale to fold. So find your own flow. This is all about your own practice. Inhale to halfway lift. Plant your hands, step it back to high plank. Good, take the inhale, lower on the exhale. Inhale to scoop the chest open. Exhale to pull it back to downward facing dog. Now one more and just move to your body's own breath. So listen to the breath. All right, when you're ready, inhale to come forward. If you've already gone, go ahead, just keep moving. That's it. You can't do anything wrong here. So as long as you're breathing and you're being really conscious of that inhale and exhale, you are practicing yoga. So just stay with it. Don't worry about messing up or not doing the right thing at the right time. All right, and when you're ready, we'll meet in downward facing dog. Good, go ahead and reach that back, that's it. All right, so let's get rid of that. Take an inhale here, exhale. Maybe take a notice of anything that's happening in your body, if your hips are talking to you or your shoulders. All right, Amy probably wants to get off her hands by now. So walk the hands to the back of the mat again, and we're gonna come into a chair pose. So from here, sink your hips, lift your heart, roll your shoulders away from the ear. So we're not trying to stick our butts out and we're not trying to overly tuck. So it's just a nice neutral spine. Hands can be at your heart center, especially since we've done a lot already. Or if you want more, you can reach them up. If you're reaching them up, do them with intention like we have here. They're not just hanging out. Amy's really engaged here and she's pulling her biceps next to her ears. Then go ahead and turn your pinkies in, thumbs out just a little, that's it. And that will get that nice, 
starting to pull the shoulder blades towards the spine. All right, go deeper because you know you can. <laughs> That's it. Breathe here. So important thing to note too is if your feet are apart, knees are apart. If feet are together, knees are together. There's no wrong answer. Do what works for you. Go lower. Take the inhale. Exhale. This is when your breath comes in hand. One more inhale. Forward fold on the exhale. Good. Walk your hands back out to the front of the mat, moving through the vinyasa. So lower on the exhale, upward facing dog. This is our transition, downward facing dog. On the next inhale, walk your left foot towards the center. Stick your right foot straight up in the air. Good. Nice. Breathe here. So turn your pinky toes, flex your foot, and then turn your pinky toes towards the floor. And that's going to help lower your hips. You want nice square hips. That's it. All right. Draw knee to nose. Take an inhale as if you're in that cat pose, knee to nose, back in the air. Good. And then push back through that back foot as if you're trying to kick the wall behind you. All right. Knee to nose again. Use the exhale to draw it back in the air. And then last one, knee to nose, and then look between your hands, drop your foot, and then we're gonna rise up to warrior one. So warrior one, your front foot faces the front of your mat, the back is at an angle, your hips are square, and your eyes are looking forward. All right, so you're pulling your right hip back, left hip forward, and that inner back thigh goes back. So, all of this is moving meditation. You're so focused on what's going on in your body right now, you don't have time to think about all that other stuff. So there's lots going on here. Engage the core, zip up the belly button, pull your shoulders back, breathe, take the inhale, and then bring it on down. Frame out your right foot, step it back to your downward facing dog. Good, and your choice, either hold this or take your vinyasa, meaning shift into your high plank, and take your push up. That's it. Breathe with it, don't forget to breathe. Other side, inhale your left leg high, reaching it up and then squaring off your hips and then knee to nose. So go ahead and go for three, back in the air. Good, two, act as if you're moving through water here, so resist it. Last one, and then stay here, plant your foot between your, le your hands, inhale to rise up, this is our warrior one. That's it, so you're pushing through that pinky edge of the back foot. Good, and you've got those nice square hips. Breathe, that's it. Go lower if you can, take the inhale here, hands come down to frame out the left foot, step it back to your downward facing dog. All right, look between your hands, bend the knees, and we'll give this a try. See if you can float to the front of the mat. That's it, good job. All right, sink your hips straight into your chair pose. We're gonna move one breath per movement. Take the inhale, exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant your hands, step it back or float it back to your high plank. Lower down, up dog. Downward facing dog, remember to push into the L's of the fingers. Right leg reaches high, knee to nose for three. See if you can actually touch your nose, two, last one, pause, raise it up, inhale to come up for warrior one. Use the exhale to come down, step it back, one more time on the other side. So vinyasa, downward facing dog, left leg raises, and knee to nose for three, two, one, pause, warrior one. And then hands come down, step it back, vinyasa, upward facing dog, breathe here, downward facing dog. Ah, so take a deep breath here, breathe in, breathe in, breathe in. Ah, let it all go. All right, breathe it in, how are you doing? Good. <laughs> All right, stay with it here, breathing in and let it go. <sighs> okay, go ahead and let's come on down to your knees and let's just take a quick check in again with our mind and our body. So maybe close your eyes and back to where we started. You can place one hand on your heart, 
one hand on your belly. Close your eyes, just checking in. How do things feel? Is your heart beating fast? Is your breath in and out uncontrollably? Is it fast? Are your hips tight? Your shoulders, what's talking to you? So the beauty of yoga is you're never really trying to fix or change what's already there. You're just tuning in to your own body and listening to what it has to say. Take a deep breath in here and let it go. And the real practice of yoga is listening to what your body has to say and honoring that. So if you don't need to take those extra push-ups, but your brain's telling you one thing and your body tells you the other thing, you're practicing yoga if you're listening to your body, not your brain. Take one more breath in and let it go. And walk your hands forward. We're gonna come back into downward facing dog. And while you're in here, just start to stretch it out and maybe move the hips side to side. Again, just feeling out your own body and what your body's feeling today. So we're gonna work through some flow that has a little bit of everything, some warriors, some um, balancing and some grounding poses as well. We're gonna do it slow the first time and then the next time we'll go through our breath. Now the good thing is when you do it slow the first time, it seems really hard and you're like, oh my gosh, how am I, can I do this again? Once you go to your breath, you're in the groove and you start flowing. So let's get started. Go ahead and lift up your right leg really high. Good, and step it forward. And let's first just come to a low lunge. So in your low lunge, you're gonna wanna pull your right leg back, your back leg forward. Modification for this is back knee is on the mat. So either way, your core is still pulled in and then you're squeezing front and back, you're squeezing side to side. So if you're lifted up, we're gonna actually add a balance pose right off the bat. Weight is gonna transfer into the right leg, reach your left hand forward and you might need your right hand on the ground to guide you. We're gonna come to a standing pose. Left hand reaches down, right hand is gonna begin to twist up towards the ceiling. That's it, so this is a twisted half moon. Yes, this is hard. It's supposed to be hard. Again, yoga is hard. So if you're feeling it, congratulations, that is exactly where you're supposed to be. All right, from here we are going to lower back, soften your front knee, begin to lightly place the back foot. Nothing's gonna change with the hands. We're gonna be in this super funky, twisted reverse crescent pose. <laughs> yes, so yoga makes you in these difficult poses because it sees how you're gonna react. So are you gonna freak out? Are you going to be scared? Are you gonna cry? Are you gonna get frustrated? Or are you gonna stay with it and breathe? That's the beauty of it. All right, from here, we're gonna come on in to our regular. We're actually gonna twist all the way open and come to a warrior two. Right hand sweeps down, left hand reaches. There you go. So beautiful warrior two here, nice parallel arms. You're pushing through the pinky edge of the back foot. Your right leg might really be burning here. So check out your front right knee and point it to the top right corner of your mat. Go deeper. Breathe. All right, from here we get a little bit of a reprieve. So begin to straighten out the left leg. Send your hips back. Reach your right hand forward. Trikonasana, triangle pose. And lean the heart back. That's it. So you want to be as narrow on the mat as possible. There we go. So lean back. That's it. Breathing in here. So this is grounding. Feel that connection on the mat. Feel the stretch. With grounding, we're gonna come on into our full half moon. So for half moon, you can begin to soften the front knee and then just reach your left leg up. Right hand is gonna just float directly underneath your right shoulder. That's it. And your hips are stacked, your shoulders are stacked. Lean back, be as narrow as you can be. If you're shaking, stay with it. Shaking's good. That back foot is just as active as the standing leg. One more breath in. And then as lightly and gently as possible, back into your warrior two pose. And we're gonna cartwheel our hands down. Step it back and either step back to downward dog and hold it, or if your body is needing to flush it out through a vinyasa, go ahead and do that. And then we'll move on to the other side. <sighs> All right, let's get rid of that old stuff. Breathe in, let it out. Left leg rises. 
Step it forward all the way between your hands, dropping the back knee, inhale to lift up. So first just coming for this stretch and this really helps open up your right hip flexor. Most of us, many of us have super tight hips because we are driving or sitting at a desk or just sitting in general. So our hips are really tight. Good, go ahead and add your twist. So drop your right hand on the inside of your left. So look at this, very nice square hip. If you would like, you can bring up your knees. So curl the toes, lifting it up. If you're doing that, imagine I come and push on the back of your leg and you're gonna resist me back. Good. Are you breathing? Sometimes when we're all twisted up, we forget to breathe. That's when we need it the most. All right, from here, we're gonna add in the balance. Plant your eyes where your hand is gonna go. You're gonna power up the left leg and then step straight into your twisted half moon. That's it. So your legs are still square, your upper body's twisted, your back leg is really turned on and active. That's it. Stay with it. Where is your mind? Where are your thoughts? Are you cursing me yet? <laughs> I think Amy is. All right, one more breath. Softly land it back. And then we're gonna rise up into that reverse crescent so your left hand's back, that's it. Pulling the abs in here and then sweep it open, warrior two. So in your warrior two, if you need a bit of a shoulder release, flip your palms, bend the elbows. Ah, it feels really good. I know, it's sometimes you don't even know you need it until you do it. All right, so from here, let's, um, what do we do next? We did our triangle pose. Straighten out the left leg, tilt your hips back, reach, 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 and then bring your left hand down, right hand high. So you wanna pull your right hip back, squeeze your left hip towards the right side of your mat. That's it, and I'm just gonna come up. So notice here, I am not fixing Amy here. I'm not correcting her. All I'm doing is helping her get deeper into her pose. So she doesn't need to be fixed. There's nothing that she's doing here that's wrong. So anytime a yoga teacher ever comes up to you in class, just know that they're trying to help you go deeper. So breathe in here, let it go, and then half moon pose. So now your left hand's gonna go forward. That's it, yep. <laughs> so staying down and then left hand, you're gonna fly the left leg up. So, <laughs> see, yes! <laughs> so I celebrate these moments because it means she's pushing herself and she is going all the way with it. No fear, she's not scared. I love this. So when somebody falls, I got you. So this is what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna help open her up. So activate your back leg, that's it. And then power up your left leg. Lean your heart back, that's it, breathe. This is very awkward, we know. Just stay with it. One more breath and slowly begin to come back to your warrior two. That's it, cartwheel the hands down, frame out the left leg, step it back. In your choice to vinyasa, take the push up or just come back to your downward facing dog. <sighs> All right, take a deep breath in, let it go. <sighs> From here, we're going to flow and add on with it. Flowing finally, here we go. All right, I'll do it with you together and then we'll add on at the end and repeat the other side and then bring it down to the mat. All right, let's take a deep breath in. Let it go. <sighs> Inhale your right leg high. Exhale to step it through. If you want, leave it off the mat. We're not gonna do the twist or the stretch. Left hand down, right hand's gonna reach high. Open it up. Maybe curl the sides of your mouth into a smile. I know, it's cheesy, just go for it. All right, reach forward, coming into your twisted half moon, and then slowly begin to drop it back. Warrior two, good. Triangle, half moon. See, we're already done on this side. Now the beauty is here, we're going to add on some more balancing. So begin to plant it back into your warrior two, landing as softly as you can. And now we're gonna turn it straight into your crescent warrior. So belly's pulled in, shoulders are back. Go as low as you can go. Back of the heel is in line with the ball of your foot. 
That's it. So instead of pushing into the heel here, maybe just lift, lift, lift as much as you can. There you go. That's it. Beautiful. Okay, from here, we are going to add balancing. When we balance, you look at one thing to focus on. I'm going to face you. And breath. So we're going to begin to lean forward. Power's in the right leg. You're going to catch your left leg. So push, 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 push. And we're going to catch the left knee. So that's it. Yay. Okay, so find that thing, that focus, your drishti. Find something to actually look at. So your choices are you can stay at your knee or you can grab your big toe with your peace fingers and then extend the left leg out. Still keeping your true north. Stay where, that's it, just stay. A lot of times I usually have to stay at the knee too. And then begin to open up to the left, right hand opens out. So from here, go with your, your left hand, so same leg, same knee, and then reach it out. Right hand's gonna reach out, that's it. <sighs> Good, staying with it. And then come back to the front. From here, bring your hands high up towards the ceiling and we're gonna kick out the left leg, flexing the foot and then lift your foot even higher. What tends to happen is we wanna lean back. So really keep your body pulled in and you're still in that true north position. So the goal is not as high as you can get your leg. It's still about just staying in that true north. All right, this is the fun part. We're gonna tick tock forward, trying not to let the left leg touch the mat, come all the way down to a standing split. Ah. Okay, so make this pose your own, meaning you can either stay here. So Amy, I'm gonna have you pull your left hip down. That's it. Again, the standing split is not about how high your, left, your back leg can be. It's about how square you can keep your hips with a lifted leg. Now from here, if you want, you can practice standing or balancing on one hand or one foot, I should say. So beginning to bring one hand to your heart, maybe to one finger on the other side, other hand to your heart, maybe reaching around your ankles. You can also practice putting your hands on the mat and then maybe putting weight into the hands. You can add little hops. Good. One more breath here. One more pose, then we're done with this. Okay, begin to bring your hands to the mat. Look at, your, at the wood. So keep your leg lifted. We're almost there. And then begin to fly the arms out. Lift your heart up. Yep, we're in warrior three. So go higher, go higher. That's it, that's it. Warrior three is right here. Breathe in. Ah, go ahead and bring the left leg down to the right. Yes! <laughs> if you're like this, congratulate yourself. That is awesome. All right, let's come into a, um, if you have a wall, which we have lots of them around us, you can play, make a little Achilles stretch. If you have a yoga block handy, you can also place your foot on the end of the yoga block instead of the wall. Good. All right, one more time on the other side. And then let's go ahead, then we're done. We'll bring it down to the mat. So let's breathe that in. Exhale, forward fold. Walk the hands out to the front of the mat. Reach the left leg high on the inhale. Exhale to bring it to the front of the mat. Right hand down, left hand reaches up for the twist. Now set your gaze in front of your mat. We're gonna rise up for our twisted crescent. That's it. Now slowly with control, come back down so you'll land in this reverse twisted crescent. So go ahead and lift the upper body up. That's it. Open up the arms to warrior two. So now your body's gonna swing. That's it, good job. All right, triangle pose. Lean it back and then half moon. So don't forget to breathe with each and every pose. Good, breathing here, inhale through the nose, exhale. Lightly bring it back down to warrior two. Here's our add-on, so we're already done with the original. Reach it forward into your crescent warrior. So we've been to crescent warrior, we're gonna add in the balancing. We'll stay here two more breaths just to feel nice and grounded. Again, you're squeezing the inner thighs, breathe in. Now remember, we're gonna stand up onto our left leg. So go ahead and begin to lean forward. Your left leg is your foundation. Reach for your right knee. 
in one movement, if you can, if you need to take a little bit, come back, stretch it out, and then just meet us here, that's totally fine too. Okay, so from here, you can take your peace fingers again, reach out, and know that your two sides are very different. So I used to be really mad at my left side of my body because it can't do what my right side, so take your right hand, that's it, same arm, same leg. And I used to be like, why won't my left side open up as much? Go ahead and open up to the right. Left hand's gonna reach out. So I'll demonstrate this way. And then I realized it's my left side that has a different story than my right side. My left side has held babies. My left side holds groceries, backpack. Amy's like, get on with your story. <laughs> Go ahead and bring it to the front and then kick that leg out. But with that, why should they be the same? They have two different stories. They're two different sides. So instead of being angry and resisting, I am more open and accepting of that because it has a beautiful part to it. All right, go ahead and lift up higher if you can. You're gonna notice your left cheek is gonna engage as well. Real yogi, right? And then begin to swing all the way down, coming into your standing split. That's it. Ah. So see if you can find a nice stretch here. Again, the hips are square, so it's gonna come down. And then once you have the square hips, begin to lift that back leg up. Good, play around with this, doing whatever it is you would like to do. Holding it is plenty hard. Um, balancing on one foot, balancing on your hands, little jumps, whatever works. Staying here, one more breath. And then our last pose here is our flying warrior three. So you're gonna begin to lift your heart, set your gaze onto the floor, raise your hands as if you're flying, and then lift the chest and the leg. So find a little bit of up, upward facing dog in your chest, that's it. Your body looks like a giant capital T. Staying here, two more breaths. You can do it, your breath is your power. You can do it with your breath. One more inhale. Exhale, nice job, Amy, and then go ahead and come on down, meeting whatever way you wanna get down, your hands and your feet together, there you go, and shake it out. Yep, there we go. When I start hearing groans, I know it's a good class. All right, same thing, you can do that little Achilles stretch. Um, another option for the Achilles while you're doing that is just to bring your right leg behind your left and really push into that right knee. Yeah, it feels really good. And then if you bend the knee, you can go even deeper. So your choice. I know it feels really good. I should have said that in the first. Yep. And then you're not flipping over. You're just crossing and then push into this heel. Yep. That's it. And let that go. And then if you bend this knee, you get a deeper stretch into the Achilles. Yeah. There we go. And then we'll just um, do a little bit of stretching. So yeah, you can go ahead and come down. Let's shake it out. Good. Maybe interlace the arms behind you. Lift your chest up towards the ceiling, getting that nice heart opener. Breathing in, <sighs> breathing out. And let's do the opposite. So now begin to bring your right hand under, left on top, wrap it around. If you don't have it right, don't worry about it. Basically your arms are just in a twist. And remember which way you are, because we're going to twist it the other way next. Breathe in. Breathe out. All right, begin to interlace the hands again. So whatever's natural for you, go for the unnatural way. So opposite thumb on top, I call it the funky way. So whatever feels unnatural, open up the chest because it's all about balance and just about doing something different. Breathe in. And then opposite arm on top. See, I've already forgotten. I think the left is under, right is on top. So in this position, lift the elbows, push the elbows forward, but pull your shoulders back and down. So you get a nice open shoulder in the back. And this is eagle arm. So we could also do this with our legs as another balancing pose. All right, go ahead and come out of that. And then come back to your downward facing dog. Walking the feet out. And then reach your right leg really nice and high. And we're gonna come into a half pigeon from here. So draw your right knee to your right wrist. Swing your shin around so that it's as parallel to the front of the mat as possible. So I'm a real stickler on pigeon. 
A lot of times I see pigeon and the hip comes off to the side and we're laying here. I want your hips to be as square as possible. So even if that means it's up in the air, that's totally fine. You can also, if you have a blanket or a yoga block, you can put that there. So inhale to lift up, keeping those square hips. Exhale to come down. Same thing with the, left, uh, the back leg. Make sure that it is in line with your left hip. It tends to want to kind of float off the left side of the mat. So take an inhale here, making space. Exhale, sink into that expansion. So with each exhale, maybe you can go a little bit deeper. You can drop the head. You can also stack your fist up, let your forehead rest, just so that you're really nice and comfortable here, feeling no resistance and breathing into your hips. So something I've been working on just in my own practice is actually visualizing my muscles work because it helps me connect the mind and the body together. So for instance, my hips are really tight today and I did a yoga practice this morning. So I was imagining myself just sending breath to those places. And even though it might just be the placebo effect and there's no science to it, there's something that just helps about that connection and it helps me relax and ease into the pose a little more. All right, take a deep breath. Let it go. Stay here for as long as you would like. When you're ready to come out, draw your hands back towards your shin, and then you can lift up the back knee, reach your right leg really nice and high, and then if you wanna flip over, which you don't really have the space to do that. Oh. Yeah, yeah, come on over. All right, now you can bend the knee, Open up the hips, yep, and then just flip, come on over, all the way over, that's it. That's quite a fearful pose sometimes too. So lift your hips high, that's it, breathe in, and this feels good after doing all those forward folds. Now bring your right hand down, coming back to your high plank, and then just shift it back into downward facing dog. All right, walk it out. One more thing I like to do actually with that, bend your knee, and then just draw giant circles with the knee one direction and then going the other direction. It just helps open up that circulation. All right, go ahead and other side, left leg, reach it up high, getting space, and then bring it on into your half pigeon pose. So left knee all the way to the left ankle, swing your shin around. The more parallel it is to the front of your mat, the deeper and harder the pose. Inhale to lift, getting those nice square hips. Exhale to fold over, making sure everything is in one straight line. Good. And then just breathing. This is one of those really obvious places too, where you're gonna notice your two sides of your body are very different. I also love this pose because it blocks out distractions and you're able to just really tune in to what your body's feeling here. Good. We'll be here two more breaths, just holding this holding space for yourself, being so proud of what you just did. And then on your next breath, begin to walk your hands back up and then send your left leg high and then open the hip. So you might just stay here. If you wanna flip step by step, lift up on the ball of your right foot, shift your right shoulder and elbow and wrist in the same line, and then just draw the foot over, lifting up. So lifting your belly button towards the ceiling, reaching your left hand back, and then reach back over, coming back to your downward facing dog, and then again, drawing those giant circles one direction and then the other. I like to pretend that my kneecap is a pencil lead and I'm just trying to draw the biggest circles I can. All right, go ahead and come on down to your knees. Let's roll onto our backs. Good. All right, and then, yay. Almost there. All right, let's come into a nice happy baby. Best way to end the class ever. Happiest little name. How can you be mad when you're in a happy baby? So soles of the feet up, 
Hands go on the pinky edges, elbows are on the insides of the knees, and you're not really pulling, you're just letting your hands be there, almost as acting as a weight, so you're not actually actively pulling, you're just letting gravity do its job. And then if you want, you can rock side to side here, feeling a massage on the low back. You can also, again, take those peace fingers and reach out one or both of the legs coming into a straddle. So go ahead and do that, take your, that's it. And then you can grab your big toe with your peace fingers. That just helps get a better grip. There we go. There. <laughs> and then you can just do one at a time or both at a time. <sighs> Feels really good on the hamstrings here. And then even here, you can rock side to side if that feels good. <sighs> just noticing your breathing, coming back to normal. Now from here, bring the legs together and let's come into a spinal twist. So I'm gonna do the stand-up version, you can stay there. So pull your right knee into your right shoulder. So you're getting a little bit of an external rotation. And then from here, wrap your leg all the way over. So pretend I'm laying on the mat here. So the name of the game here is not to get your knee to touch the mat. That has nothing to do with anything. You're trying to get a spinal twist here. So you wanna feel that stretch in your low spine, not in the glute, but it might go there. Usually it travels a little bit to there. Mm -hmm. And then try to keep your opposite shoulder on the mat, so your right shoulder in this case. So take a breath. Use the exhale, that's it. All right, switch sides. So go ahead and give that right knee just a little pull back in, seeing if anything's different. Other side. And then twisting over the body. So you'll see what I was doing on the other side. I'm just pushing down her shoulder and then making sure she stays grounded as I'm opening up the spine. All right, and then from here, pull the left knee back in and we're just gonna end with a bit of an inversion, which don't be scared, um, coming into a shoulder stand. So in our shoulder stand, we're still stacking our joints, your feet, knees and hips are all in the same line and you are supporting yourself with your hands. So you can push down into the triceps. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I'm gonna push here and then lift up, that's it. And then if you wanna go further, you can begin to float the legs behind you coming into a plow pose. So this will depend a lot on your hamstring opening, on your low back. So listen to your body here, what feels right. And once you're there, go ahead and drop the hands by your sides to really push into the mat, giving you that next level of support. So breathing with it. If your feet touch all the way to the bottom, then you can come into deaf man's pose where your knees come on either side of your ears. This is just really good after all the up and downs and the forward folding and the standing. Now we get to invert and flip it all literally on its head. All right, begin to come out of that, lifting the knees back up. So however you got into the pose, come back. There you go, starting to support the low back. And then just slowly rolling all the way down. That's it. You got it. All right. And then settling in for the best part of our practice, Shavasana. So um, from here, you can just take as long as you want coming into your practice. So you can just lie down. I love to set up for this pose just as if we were for a warrior pose. So hands are by your sides, shoulders are nice and open, belly is relaxed, feet are long, and then just fall to your sides. Stay here as long as you want. And then when you're ready, you can come up anytime. Go ahead and close your eyes. And just to feel how uncomfortable it is to hold on to things that don't serve you, we are going to hold on to our breath. So take the biggest inhale you have taken so far. Breathe in, breathe in, breathe in, breathe in. Take a little more. Hold it. Five, four, three, two, one. <sighs> letting it go, deflating and feeling how good it is to let that go. Continue to stay here as long as you would want. My name is Trish. Thank you so much for practicing with me today and allowing me to guide you through your practice. Enjoy your day. Namaste.
Grace wants in. <laughs>